closed session for today. Thank you. Okay. So first of all, uh, thank you for everyone. Uh, <coughs> Yeah, one second. So I'm again uh, sharing my screen. I hope you can see my screen. Yes, your screen is open. Yes, you can okay. see your screen. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. So, uh, first of all, uh, thank you for everyone joining uh, for this uh, training demo session. Um, so, to thank you, uh, Paul and team, uh, uh, once again <clears throat> for choosing eFacility uh, for this uh, wonderful session to your uh, team. So today uh, we have planned for uh, facility management system uh, workshop session. So, so I, I am from Sierra ODC Private Limited. It's located in India. Uh, our office is a world's second highest rated green building, which is awarded by US Green Building Council and Indian Green Building Council. So myself, uh, I am Rafael. I am uh, assistant manager, uh, business development. So taking care of uh, uh, e-facility product across the globe <clears throat> so specifically uh, africa market and working so recently uh, we got a new order from talk show uh, from south africa so that i want to share it with you guys <clears throat> so about a product uh, e-facility uh, is a flagship product <clears throat> and also it's a world, world class uh, FM solution is an integrated workspace management system and CAFM tool. <clears throat> so we have an end to end facility management tool uh, which has uh, 37 modules which is available in our e facility. So each and every module <clears throat> is interconnected and also uh, independent. And e facility uh, supports multi site, multi organization, multi time zone, and multilingual. And also <clears throat> e facility. Uh, can integrate uh, seamless with uh, most of the building management system in the market. Like we are already working with Honeywell, Siemens, Schneider, Asbel, Cylon. So all these building management uh, companies we are working and we have integrated with their building management system in our facility application. And also IoT integration that can be possible and also we can integrate with the any third party applications like SAP, Oracle Fusion, uh, JD Edwards, uh, Microsoft, Sierra uh, Dynamics. <clears throat> so, all these applications can be integrated in our e facility. And also, the third party hardware like the access control system, RFID. So, all these can be integrated in our e facility, uh, facility management software. <clears throat> And apart from that, uh, e-facility can integrate with AAML, uh, that is artificial intelligence and machine learning. So here uh, we have a user-friendly virtual assistant <clears throat> which supports in e-facility. So, so we have uh, initiated an innovative tool called maintenance group, uh, the style of chat GPT uh, we have introduced in our e-facility so where you can uh, like uh, prompt any uh, questions so it will uh, provide the uh, references and provide the answers against the question uh, so that AA integration we have run it in our e facility so that is uh, the newly added uh, feature in e facility software <coughs> so um, so e facility is catering to uh, any domains like uh, <clears throat> this e-facility is implemented <clears throat> in corporate houses, government organization, airports, business parks, uh, commercial complexes, residential complexes, and healthcare and hospitality, schools and university, manufacturing facilities, banking sector. So all these domains we have implemented our facility management software 
over uh, 200 plus successful implementations. Uh, this e-facility has been uh, implemented across the globe, uh, more than 30 plus countries. So that is the strength of the facility, e-facility uh, facility management software. <laughs> so this slide is talks about uh, uh, the major customers across the globe. Uh, we have done the implementation so that uh, we are displaying. Uh, so we are working uh, in US, UK, Africa, Middle East, Asia Pacific and India. So all these uh, countries we are working and we have done the implementation for e-facility facility management software. So if we have, uh, uh, I'm okay, right? Uh, so shall I continue? Shall I proceed? I think you can. Yeah, okay, go ahead. So this is the modules <clears throat> that we are having in our e-facility. So we have end-to-end -end, uh, facility management software, as I said. So today we are going to discuss about all these modules, what is available and what are the features uh, which is included. So all those things we are going to discuss in this uh, facility management software. So as I said, we have 30, uh, <clears throat> seven modules are available. So each and every module is independent module. Uh, the customers, they can pick and choose. The facility managers like you, it's uh, uh, enterprise asset management uh, is a key module. Uh, and then we have help desk and other modules like facility booking, space management, system management, cafeteria, tenant building system, main zone, library management, pattern management, instant feedback. And then we have a smart building controls and then smart building app that is a mobile application uh, which supports ios and android platform <clears throat> drawing and document and then hrms time and attendance payroll project task management travel request management travel expense reimbursement the news and articles and we do have environmental sustainability models which covers uh, occupant health and well-being and then uh, ghg accounting Sustainability dashboard that is called energy dashboard, waste management and fuel management is part of uh, the environmental sustainability. And also, like we have uh, risk and work permit, risk control, key management, capital project management, and stores and inventory, and BMSB is interface, instant management, and printing and stationery, and card management. So, these are the modules which is available in one platform uh, in our e facility. So we are going to discuss this about it in detail, like uh, what are the features and functionalities which is available in this uh, facility management software. Okay. Um, so talks about uh, multi-site and multi-organization concept, like uh, the Z facility can uh, install this application in a central server and you can able to access the other location. For example, uh, if you have more than uh, one site, uh, so this can be uh, centralized uh, implementation. Uh, if you uh, the facility managers like you if you want to see the complete data of all the uh, like sites yes you, you can able to view the details as a site specific <clears throat> and also like uh, uh, this application uh, you can also uh, provide the user privileges access to the designated by the employees um, so based on the designation ways you can able to give the user access privilege and based they can view that or modify the information whatever they want to do so that can be uh, done it through this application. So this is about the multi-site and multi-organization concept. And this is the system structure, uh, how the e-facility uh, FM tool will work. Um, so in property or building or any plant, uh, so there is a systems, that is a BAS, spire alarm, security elevator, and other system, subsystems are available. So these will be controlled by the building management system. And, and on top of it, uh, the headphone services will be there, which is uh, in, interconnected with uh, network infrastructure, whether it could be a wired or wireless. So on top of it, our uh, facility management software, like e-facility, on top of it, it will work. So in case of any problems, uh, which is identified by the building management system, it will automatically trigger the alarm, it automatically create the uh, work order and create the help desk ticket and automatically assign to the technician to work on it and close the job. So that is the uh, system structure and flow uh, for any FM tool. <coughs> okay. So now uh, we, are we are coming to the main picture. Uh, so the modules uh, we are going to discuss now. 
so start with uh, the core module uh, so maintenance management system is a core module uh, it's also called asset management so in our maintenance management we have uh, two sub modules uh, one is asset management and another, another one is stores and inventory and other than that we have other sub modules as well like procurement contract key management or field management is also part of the maintenance management system. So now we are going to discuss about the asset management system. So what this module is going to uh, do like uh, uh, for the facility managers, uh, this module is a uh, uh, heart of the module, like I could say. Uh, so in this module, what you can do, like whatever the assets which is available, so that can be captured uh, in the tool uh, so in the facility, uh, you can capture all the asset details uh, and then uh, based on that, you can do the preventive uh, maintenance, like we, you can do the 52-week calendar uh, and based on that, it will automatically trigger uh, the work order and assign to the technician or contractor, so that is the strength. Um, so in this module, like uh, we have, uh, uh, there are some key functions which is available. So asset management is one part and then we have asset tracking. Uh, with RFID or barcode or NFC or QR code. So from that, uh, so if you have any asset, so you can stick those things and based on that, you can scan it and you can view the complete information of the asset. So that is available in our uh, maintenance management system. So this will work like a parent and child method. Uh, the first level is based on the license and remaining levels like a facility or building or plant and like that. Uh, there will be uh, uh, floors, uh, whether it be first floor, second floor, or third floor. Under that, there will be the yeah, cubicles, and uh, under the cubicles, uh, so what are the assets? So that can be mapped against the location, and also you can assign those assets as belongs to which department, which team, or which technician that can be uh, uh, captured in, in our uh, asset register. So from there, what you can do is like you can uh, create a scheduled maintenance activity based on the frequency wise. So that is called the uh, preventive maintenance scheduling. Um, and then we have a GAS and BIM integration is also available. So if you could integrate with the BIM technology, uh, the floor plan, um, what is available in this uh, in your building so that you can able to leave it in a 3D form. So we have that provision, like we have this integration in our e-facility. Uh, so the BIM integration is number percentage possible. <clears throat> and then we have automated work order and management. So the system will notify uh, which technician is available and based on that, the automated uh, work order can be triggered uh, to the concerned uh, technician uh, through this application for, for uh, preventive maintenance or corrective maintenance. Then we have automated resource management. Uh, like uh, <clears throat> Again, uh, the based on the availability of the uh, technician, it will trigger the, uh, it automatically, the work order will trigger uh, to the concerned uh, technician. And then we have configurable uh, work order approval workflow is also available because of that you can able to configure those work order workflow for whom needs to get approval in case of uh, if you need any multiple approvals, uh, 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 like the uh, FM manager or maintenance manager or HOD like or something like that, if you need some approval. So that configuration, you can able to do it in this uh, system. Then we have a, a service level agreement. So this is very important for you uh, as, a as a facility managers. Uh, you need this because uh, if your technician is not complete with the uh, job on time, uh, it could be a very critical moment. So we have SLA management in case if the person is not taking a job or not completed on time, this will be escalated to the higher level person. So we have that kind of a uh, provision which is available in our uh, facility maintenance management. Then apart from that, we have an ed contract management, energy consumption and energy dashboard is also available. So in an energy dashboard, what you can do is like we can able to view, integrate with the building management or smart meters or IoT. You can able to view the uh, data uh, like uh, what is the trend, uh, what is the electricity consumption, what is the water consumption, solar consumption. So all these details that you can able to uh, weave it in single dashboard. So that is an, uh, strength in this energy dashboard. Then other than that, like we have property management, field management, key management, uh, printing and stationery, um, and preventive maintenance library with, uh, within built standard policies available. And then we have an inspection checklist 
and then we have SMS approval for our products and then the integration with third party applications and on screen as well display of clearing of products in case if the work order is needed to expiry so that you can able to weave it in the dashboard itself then uh, we have a stores and inventory and procurement management is also uh, a part of maintenance management is one of the sub module so where uh, you can able to capture all your stores related uh, items or uh, uh, material with uh, uh, like post all those things can be carried out in the stores and inventory part and apart from that, the other uh, key functions that we are having is a corrective uh, alert maintenance. So in case uh, uh, hazard is not working properly, uh, so or, uh, or it's like if you are uh, doing any uh, kind of inspection activity where you can found uh, any problem, so there uh, you can able to create uh, alert maintenance work order. So that will be shared with the technician or contractors to do the job. Then uh, we can also capture the equipment reading, then labor management, resource scheduling, time card, and downtime, downtime reporting is also available. So based on that, you can understand uh, how many hours downtime and uh, those things you can able to track it in the reports. So this is the screen looks like. Uh, this is our asset equipment register. So where you can uh, capture uh, the asset details and uh, like uh, as i said earlier like the first level is license and remaining level site building floor area and then uh, this uh, asset is belongs to which uh, department organization uh, like who is the manufacturer what is the model number and any documents or wiring diagrams so, so everything can be stored over here in this asset equipment register and also in e facility you can able to against the asset you can able to calculate the depreciation and valuation analysis and complete asset life cycle management is available in our uh, uh, maintenance management part then uh, this is a uh, talks about uh, the work order screen so where you can able to view uh, the work order details like uh, what is the work order number equipment number work order type status and this work order is belongs to which site and what is the aging when is the due start or when it is completed, uh, needs to complete. So all this information, uh, you can able to track it in this uh, work order screen. And then uh, we have a SLA also. So in case, uh, if it is in green color, uh, so we have some three different color codes. Uh, so so the SLA start, uh, so if it is a uh, SLA is in green, it's a normal stage. If it is in yellow, it is nearing breach. Uh, and then if it is red, the SLA is expired. So if it is expired, then you will get an alert. Uh, like uh, the facility managers will get an alert like this work is still not completed and what is the issue of this one that you can find a root cause analysis. Okay. And this is about the work order screen. So where you can uh, uh, capture uh, the work order number and against which equipments you are going to do this work. And location hierarchy is also there. Uh, so this is mainly for your technician to uh, understand uh, currently in which site there is a problem, uh, which location so they can able to weave it. And whether uh, uh, this uh, equipment uh, is under warranty or uh, uh, it's in uh, AMC period or something like that. So that can be also, you can able to view it. And you can give the job description to the technicians and then you can also give the instruction and safety notes. And also against this work order, you can understand what is the cost, uh, like labor cost or spare parts cost, uh, another uh, related cost what is for this work. So that can be also calculated. And then uh, you can also set the priority, whether this work order is a high priority or low or medium priority. So that can be also set it uh, in the work order management. And then uh, uh, you can also get the trade alert for any, uh, whatever the works has been completed. Uh, so you can also get the email and SMS notification. So we have that provision in our system. Okay. So this is about uh, the stores and inventory. Uh, is one of the sub modules in uh, maintenance management system. So these are the features which is available where you can able to capture the multi versus and uh, inventory master, like master inventory list is available. Like what are the inventories you are maintaining and managing so that you can able to track it and what is the minimum quantity and maximum quantity is, rec is required in the store. 
uh, when it is reaches to the minimum quantity where you can able to raise a uh, material uh, requisition and then uh, you can also able to uh, raise the ordering uh, so once you get a uh, approval from your higher ups then uh, you can order the equipment to your vendor then once uh, uh, in the vendor and contract management so where you can able to uh, raise uh, the quotation request so once you receive the quotation request from your vendor then you can able to do the uh, PO analysis uh, petition, sorry, petition analysis, and then now uh, you can send it for a PO request. So once the PO request is done, once the approval you get it, then you can issue the PO directly through the e-facility application to the vendor, and you can again uh, uh, update your stocks in our uh, e-facility stores and inventory management. So this is what uh, uh, the stores and inventory will work. And from there, uh, like you can convert the uh, equipment asset to uh, item or uh, item to asset so that the conversion of an equipment is also available. So in this uh, 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 maintenance management, it will work like, uh, uh, like uh, from the scratch to scrap, you can very well monitor and track the equipment and inventories. So that is the strength of the maintenance management system. And then we have a dashboard as well. So here we have some set of uh, filters which is available. Uh, so based on the parameters, search parameters, you can able to uh, view the dashboard as organization wise or site specific or the selected uh, date range. And based on that, you can view the information. So in this dashboard, you can view like what is the normal work order count and what is the preventive maintenance work order count and then a product outtake, inspection related work order details and everything can be carried out over here. So here you can able to view the numbers. So from that, uh, the FO managers like you, you can able to view uh, like why still it is pending. So with just a one click, you can export the report. So we have the position uh, in our uh, dashboard. And this is re uh, related to the vendor performance dashboard and then record account related dashboard and record account uh, for the each equipment type you can able to view it. Uh, so more than now uh, we have 10 plus dashboards which is available in the maintenance management system and 200 plus reports uh, which is available uh, in our e facility. Okay. So I think if someone is to say So if you have any queries, please stop me. What you did, uh, did not understand, I can explain you once again. Hello. So whoever is commented Hello. in the chat, please let me know. Uh, so I, once again, uh, I'm happy to take this uh, maintenance management presentation. Okay, uh, good evening. Yeah, good evening. Okay, uh, I was carried away by these uh, standard reports. I, I don't know if you can explain this back, these standard reports, because most of my issues in my facility is uh, how to give how to give reports, uh, work order, and all of that. And again, SLA. I don't know if you can explain this on our reports again. Okay, fine. So in this system, what you can do is like, uh, as I said earlier, like uh, you have to capture the uh, equipment first. And then uh, once the equipment is created in the system, then you have to uh, uh, like uh, create a, a preventive maintenance activity that is called schedule maintenance activity where your uh, technician is not uh, completed uh, the work or the work order on time then we it will be escalated to the higher level person so during the installation process like we have three uh, set of color codes which is available one is uh, green and second one is yellow and the third one is red uh, so as i uh, said earlier if it is in uh, green color the sla is in normal stage if it is in yellow the sla will go in nearing breach if it is in red it is already es escalated okay so from there, we have a report called, in the standard reports, we have SLA by work order detail report. So this is the report which is available. So where you can able to export, what are the uh, work orders, uh, 
uh, which is uh, SLA expired, so that you can able to uh, export it in the e facility maintenance management. It's based on uh, site specific. You can able to export the report, or else like uh, you can export the re report by organization specific, or else uh, uh, like uh, equipment specific or department specific. You can uh, export the report. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, is this your query uh, covered? No, I'm clear. I'm clear now. I'm clear now. Okay. So I think uh, you. You know, some other persons has also uh, messaged. You are clear, right? Uh, so you only raised a query, right? So is that. Uh, good evening. Yeah, good evening, Mister. Yeah, what, what is your query? Uh, I want to ask. Um, what we have here on these standard reports are they already templates that once we get on board on the software, we just only impute or we are going to start drafting each? Is there a template already provided by the software? Yes, we have a master templates. Uh, so we have uh, like uh, 100 plus master templates which is available. So so we have to import it in one time. Uh, once the data is filled, then the report is also generated. Uh, the readily available reports, standard reports, is more than 200 plus reports are readily available so that you can export it in one shot. So in case if you, if you need any uh, customized report, yes, we have a provision uh, in the report builder where you can, uh, whatever the information you are required, uh, from the report so that also you can able to generate okay thank you very much okay thank you so any other queries uh anyone so godwin do you have any queries good evening yeah yes good evening yeah please uh, my my question is um the AI, said AI is inputted in the, the e facility. So, for example, this standard report, can it be prompt to give you a report to write a maintenance policy or fiscal inventory report when you prompt it? Uh, I'm not clear. Can you please come again? My question is that the AI that is uh, infused in this e facility, mm -hmm. how can you prompt it? Maybe you want to prompt it to write a maintenance policy report for you. Can it be done like that? Or what kind of work does the AI do? Okay. So you are talking about the AI, artificial intelligence, am I right? Yes. Okay, fine. So in our e-facility, we have a new feature called maintenance guru. Um, so in case if you are a, a technician or facility manager, if you want to know about the any kind of a ticket or work order, or if you want to uh, view any kind of a report, so you have to prompt uh, uh, like uh, what is the uh, uh, exact issue so that you have to prompt it, uh, prompt into the system. So the maintenance guru, what we will do like it will uh, bring the answers from that and what are the tickets has been raised against that and uh, uh, how it was completed and all the informations will be uh, provided to you. In maintenance guru, it's a new feature we have added in the facility. I would like to ask, how long does it take? Um, if, for example, my organization wants to come on board e facility, how long does it take for you to to get us active on on the software? Okay, it's it depends on the modules. Uh, what you are selecting. And depends on the licensing. For example, uh, if you want to start with only one site, is yes, within uh, 10 to 15 days, we can do the implementation. Or else if you want to do it for 100 sites, then uh, obviously it will take some time. And also like uh, uh, from from the customer end also, they, they have to provide the support for us to do the implementation uh, because uh, this is not only uh, responsible for uh, Sierra E facility, from the customer end, they have to uh, provide the master data. 
Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. So any other queries or shall I go? Are you to provide us on the cost of um, each model? Sorry, you were asking about the costing part? Yes. No, not right now. So this is a completely uh, uh, demo session. No, so this is not uh, related to any cost. All right, okay. So this is the key performance indicators which is available uh, in maintenance management system. So standard KPAs is available. Also, it will uh, create the I mean time between failures, overview PM, work orders, and then maintenance cost variations, etc. So from there, uh, you can able to create a custom reports and dashboards. Um, and every uh, like uh, 30 seconds, uh, it will automatically get refreshed as well. So we have a BIM integration. Um, so where uh, the floor plans can be viewed as a 3D format. So we have already integrated uh, in BIM technologies from our client in India. Uh, so this is mainly for uh, uh, like uh, avoiding the 2D diagrams. So you can you can view it uh, in a 3D format where exactly the asset is located in your uh, premises. So that is the main reason for BIM technology uh, that is introduced in e facility maintenance management. And also we have IoT driven uh, wanted smart facility uh, management. Uh, okay. So from here, uh, what you can do is uh, so these are the buttons we are having. Uh, so through these buttons, we can able to raise a complaint or raise a request or uh, creating a purchase order, controlling uh, equipments like uh, lights, air conditioner, and then uh, you can book a facility, uh, book a space, and also you can able to give the feedback. So using this uh, one touch, one click buttons, uh, the flick buttons, mod, uh, IoT buttons, uh, AWS buttons, you can able to do this uh, uh, IoT driven one touch mode solution. So then we have a risk and work permit was one of the module in e-facility. Uh, so here, uh, if you are doing any kind of a, a work order, so before that you can find what kind of a risk is available. Uh, so once uh, the risk is identified and uh, once the risk is closed, then you can start freely start your uh, work order. So these are the dashboards which is available. And then we have help desk and knowledge base is a ticketing tool. Um, so these are the key features which is available in the help desk system. So where uh, uh, the um, uh, where the employees or end users they can raise a request in case of any uh, uh, request uh, problem or any kind of incident. So they can raise a request through this application, uh, through uh, the application or through uh, the mobile app or else uh, they can send the email or they can send SMS. And also in case of BMS integ integrated, in case if any of uh, problems or failures, so BMS will to the, uh, create a uh, ticket in our e facility help desk. So again, now uh, once the ticket is generated, um, this will be automatically assigned to the consent department, uh, consent team member uh, who is taking care. Um, so he will uh, view uh, what kind of a ticket has been raised and based on that, he will support it and close it. So again, we have SLA management here in case uh, the technician is not completed the ticket on time, then it will be escalated to the higher level person. So once the ticket has been closed, then you can also get a feedback from the end users. So we have a permission for collecting the feedback also. So this is the dashboard, the uh, help desk dashboard, which is available. So where you can able to uh, uh, view uh, what is the total number of calls and then uh, what are the calls has been resolved and then uh, uh, department wise you can able to view the uh, ticket related details and what are the calls is active uh, what are the calls are closed uh, pending so all those informations you can able to uh, view it in this uh, at this dashboard so then uh, we are having a printing and stationary uh, management system so again uh, this is mainly for the hr team like where uh, uh, like uh, in case if they are need any kind of a printing and stationary items, uh, it is also will work like a, a help desk tool. So where uh, the employees or end users, they can raise a request through this application. So then we have facility uh, booking system is one of the module in e-facility. 
so where the employees are end users, they can reserve the facilities. Um, so we have some uh, features like uh, facility directory. So whatever the facilities which is available, either it could be a uh, discussion room, conference halls, or playgrounds, and whatever the facilities which is available uh, in the premises, so that you can able to capture it in the facility directory. So where uh, the end users, they can uh, request, uh, booking requests through online or offline. So this can be booked uh, for them and they can invite the peoples internal and external. And also they can uh, like uh, uh, view, we have a visual booking uh, option is also available. The end users, they can visually uh, view the floor plan and view what are the facilities which is available and based on the- uh, so based on the availability of the facility, so they can uh, book it for a single day or multiple day. So we have that provision. And then uh, like in e-facility, like we can also integrate uh, the payment gateway for this facility booking module. So in case if the facility uh, is a chargeable, so the end users, they can pay for that. And internal and external attendees for meetings is also available. So where the, while you are booking the uh, meeting room, so you can also uh, capture their email address so once the meeting room has been booked, the invite will be automatically sent to their email. Uh, so integration with uh, Outlook is also possible in our facility uh, booking system. And for the external attendees, uh, so the e-facility can interconnect with the uh, visitor management tool also. So where you can able to do the pre-registration for the meeting attendees. So that can be also done uh, through this application. So this is the floor plan uh, which is available. So where you can able to view uh, the facilities which is available. And against the facility, like what are the uh, inventories is attached and what is the uh, size of the facility and, how, and in case if you need any other uh, additional inventory, so that can be also raised through here. And if you need any cafeteria related request also, you can able to uh, raise it through this uh, booking module. Then we have a, a, a kiosk based uh, facility booking system. So where you can uh, place the kiosk devices in front of uh, uh, your dis facilities, like whether it could be a discussion room or conference room. So from here itself, you can able to view uh, what are the time slots is available and based on that, you can select it for a half an hour meeting or 15 minutes meeting, you can select it and you can book it immediately. This is for a quick booking uh, process. So also like uh, you can integrate with building management system where you can control the equipments. Uh, so in case if you want to, uh, we would, uh, uh, in case if you are under the projection mode, so you can enable the projection mode or the, whatever the window blinds which is available, it automatically comes down. If it, uh, if it is like uh, uh, meeting mode, it will goes up. And in case if you want to extend the meeting or if you want to close the meeting, so just a click, uh, you can able to uh, do this. Uh, then we have a space management system uh, is one of the uh, module in e-facility. This is mainly for uh, tracking the occupancy uh, for the utilization of uh, space. Uh, so in a large facility, if you could see like, uh, uh, if you want to uh, view uh, where the employee is sitting and they want to book it for a single day or multiple days, uh, we have our desking. And then uh, the space management system here, you can able to allocate the seats for your employees uh, based on department wise or project wise, you can uh, uh, book a space for them. And then uh, we have a uh, occupancy dashboard as well. In against the cubicles, like uh, against the flow. So what is the occupancy percentage or what is the vacant percentage? So that information you can able to leave it in the dashboard. And then uh, like uh, shift assignment is also available. So shift ways also you can book the space for uh, employees. The same seat can be booked for multiple employees. So we have that provision in our space management module. And then, uh, for example, like uh, we have hot desking also. So you can place a gas devices uh, in front of uh, the workstation. So the employees, they can book it for a single, uh, uh, quick booking. So they can do the quick booking for, uh, uh, for a single day. Or they can use it through hot desking. And also we have a mobile app. So where the employees, they can book it uh, for example, if employee is coming for an office tomorrow, so he can book it by today itself. Uh, he can uh, book the slot uh, and he can use it for uh, the particular day. So once the space, uh, once the space is occupied and once it is, uh, once it was utilized, so after that, uh, the help desk uh, will automatically trigger. The ticket will be triggered to the housekeeping team. 
uh, to clean the uh, particular space. So we have that provision in our e facility. So this is the space booking using uh, Kia system. So where you can able to book the space, uh, and then uh, if you want to search employee, uh, for example, if you want to find a colleague, uh, so where he is sitting. So we have a staff location search. Uh, you you can just uh, enter their name and you can able to identify the person, uh, the seat is allocated or where he is sitting. So those information you can able to enter. So, so this is the floor plan which is available. So again, we have a three color codes. Uh, the seat, uh, if it is in green color, it is not allocated to anyone. Or if it is in yellow, which is partially allocated, someone will be going to occupy, so on so red. And if it is in red, it's fully occupied, or um, uh, it is already assigned to uh, any person. So that is what uh, in the floor plan you can able to weave it, and based on that, you can do the booking plan. So, so far, any queries? Okay, uh, I will move to uh, visitor management. So again, uh, visitor management is one of the uh, key module uh, in our e-facility. So where you can be able to track the visitors, uh, like who are all the visitors visiting or visiting to the organization so that can be tracked. So there is an online appointment request for visitors. Uh, for example, if someone is coming to an office, uh, so they can uh, raise a request through this application and that will be sent it for the approval and rejection part. Uh, so once it is approved by the host, uh, then he will get a uh, notify alert, uh, either uh, email alert or SMS alert or notification, uh, they can get it. And then uh, we have uh, uh, self sign in and sign out using KS option is also available. So where, uh, uh, where the employee is coming for, uh, coming for a walk-in, so they can uh, enroll their details uh, using the kiosk application. Uh, so they, they can give their details, the uh, personal details and whom they are going to meet and uh, they can capture their photo signature and they can sign the NDA and print the temporary, uh, either it could be a e-pass or hot copy pass, they can able to print it. So again, now in visitor management, like uh, we have a pre-registration option. So on behalf of the visitor, the employee themselves, they can able to uh, uh, book the, uh, like uh, register the appointments for the visitors. And then uh, we have uh, uh, integration uh, with access control system. And then uh, like we can able to track the visitor movements uh, uh, with the help of access control system. So wherever the locations event, so you can able to track it. And then uh, you can integrate with uh, Outlook integration as well, uh, where uh, the host or uh, the employee, they can able to view uh, what are the appointments today. So that can be viewed, viewed in the uh, Outlook calendar. And then we have visitor overstay alert uh, is also available. So where the, uh, the visitor uh, is permit for only one hour. In cases after one hour, maybe another uh, five minutes or 10 minutes, we can set the uh, like uh, grace period. So in case if the time limit reaches is still in the campus, then automatically the overstay alert will be triggered to the security as well as the host. Then uh, we have a visitor dashboard, uh, which is available in the visitor management system. So where, where you can able to view uh, who are all the pre-registration visitors, unsigned in visitors, and active uh, visitors, and signed out visitors. So all these, those details you can able to uh, view it in the uh, visitor dashboard part. So this is the self-service uh, kiosk. So where uh, the visitors, they can enroll their details. So we have seven steps. Uh, they, the first step, they have to capture the personal details and second step, they have to ca capture the host details and their photo uh, in case uh, uh, they have any government ID card. So that can be also captured and then signature on what are the items they are carrying. So those details, they can, uh, uh, they can update it and then uh, they can print the temporary uh, badge. So this is the flow uh, which is available in the visitor service case. So then uh, we have a time and attendance system. Uh, again, uh, it's a people management system, like we have uh, time and attendance, payroll, and uh, HRMS system. So in this uh, time and attendance module, uh, what you can do is like, uh, uh, we can capture the employee profile and we can assign the shift uh, to the employee. So we have a roster as well. 
um, based on that, you can uh, able to assign the SIP to the employees. And also, like we have other key uh, features, like the employees, they can raise a request through or leave request through this application, uh, permissions, on duty, all those things. The employee they can able to raise it. And also, we can integrate with uh, face recognition, uh, access control, then uh, biometric. Uh, this is mainly for uh, to capture the clocking clock codes. Okay. But then, uh, like, uh, we have a configurable comp of uh, is also available in case if the employees is working for more than uh, 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 like uh, allocated hour, hours. So then he will be eligible for the comp of as well. So they can, uh, the comp of will be generated on that. Uh, so they can utilize for the uh, union the day. And then, like, we can integrate this time and attendance uh, to the payroll uh, system as well. So, where uh, how many hours the employee work, and based on that, the salary will be also processed uh, by integrating the time and attendance and payroll system. So, this is the uh, time and attendance so, uh, dashboard. So, where the employee they can able to view the calendar. Uh, so, what are the shift has been assigned? If it is in green color, there is no exception. Uh, if it is in uh, red color, there will say exception. Maybe uh, he came off his uh, clock in late or clock out, uh, clock out early or something like that. Or uh, he did not uh, uh, submit any kind of a time sheet or something like that. You can able to uh, view uh, it in red color. And uh, here you can able to view the uh, leave management as well. So how many leaves uh, is allocated for this particular person? And how many leaves they have? All those information they can able to view it. Uh, if you want, if you integrate with the access control system, like you can able to track the clock in and clock out timing. So what time they came in and what time uh, went out, all those informations you can able to uh, wave it in the in and out details. Then we have a hours, uh, monthly expected hours for the employee to work and how many hours they have, uh, what they have worked and what is the software. So those details and all you can able to wave it in the uh, dashboard itself, in this uh, dashboard, the employee dashboard itself. Uh, then uh, the next part is like a smart facility app uh, is a mobile application uh, which is support iOS and Android platform. The latest version of iOS and latest version of Android devices can be supported. So in our smart facility application, like uh, uh, we have uh, uh, multiple modules which is available. Uh, one is asset management and tracking. Work order management, interest ticketing, visitor management, uh, facility booking, smart building controls, hot desking, and then uh, integrated cafeteria management, uh, then mail room management, uh, attendance and leave management, library management, and employee payroll management. So total, we have 12 modules which is available in the smart facility application. So this smart facility application is mainly designed for the end user perspective and technician perspective, uh, which is designed. So in this uh, smart facility app, the first we can see the asset management part uh, where you can able to uh, capture the asset de details uh, in this uh, mobile app itself. And then you can able to validate the asset. And then uh, like uh, uh, if you have uh, like barcode or QR code or NFC tax against the particular asset, you can able to scan it and you can view like what are the work orders and what are the assignments against the particular uh, uh, asset so that you can able to leave it and based on that the technician can work on it. Then uh, we have work order management. Uh, so here uh, the employees they can able to view uh, like what are the uh, work orders has been created for them and based on that they can uh, like uh, check what is pending and what is completed and based on that they will uh, work on it and they can close the work order. So this is the work order screen is available. Uh, so here the technician, they can able to view like, uh, if, for example, if any work order is assigned to him. So this work order, okay, what is this work order number? And uh, for which equipment he, he wants to do that work? And what are the instructions has been provided? And what is the action he taken? And what is the next action to be uh, taken by? So all this information can be captured uh, over here in this uh, work order management part in mobile app. Again, we have a help desk and knowledge base. So here, what you can do is like uh, uh, the end users on the technician perspective, uh, again, this help desk has been uh, developed. 
So end users, they can re record any kind of a new request. So in case if they are facing any problems or uh, like if, uh, if they need any request or something like that. So using this app, they can able to raise a request to the technician. So how uh, they are doing in web application, though based on that, they can able to do it in mobile app as well. Then we have visitor management system. So again, we have a pre-registration. So on behalf of the visitor, the employee themselves, the host themselves, they can able to do the pre-registration. And if, in case if any uh, appointment request has been received, the host, they can able to view what are the appointments received and based on that, he can you know, accept or reject those requests. And uh, validate for the visitor pass approval and visitor entry. And, uh, and also like in case if you want to trigger any kind of emergency notification, so that can be also done through the mobile. So this is the facility booking system. Again, uh, uh, we can able to view uh, like what are the facilities which is available. So through mobile app itself, uh, uh, the end users, they can book the facility. So they can able to view the available facility and they can book it for a single day or, or multiple days. Then uh, we have a smart building controls. So this application is mainly uh, like uh, we have to integrate with the building automation system. Um, so where uh, you can able to control uh, the rooms, you can control the equipments and everything can be done through this uh, smart building control system. So here you can able to increase the uh, um, light, uh, then uh, you can decrease it and then window planes of AC and everything can be controlled over uh, the smart building controls using this mobile application. Again, we have smart uh, space booking system. So where the, the employees, they can book the uh, seats for a single day or multiple day through this mobile app. Then we have a cafeteria management. Um, so this I, uh, I have not explained so far. Uh, it will be coming in the upcoming slides. Uh, so here, uh, what the employee will do, so they can book a meal request. Uh, and also they can able to do the payment. So through this uh, mobile application. So either, for example, if they book the meal request for uh, breakfast or lunch, uh, so they can also uh, pay through this application, either uh, online payment or uh, UPI or whatever, uh, they can able to uh, do it through uh, the mobile app. Okay, hello, Mr. Rafael. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Sorry for the interruption. Um, please, we'd we'll like to have a five minutes economic break now so that you can okay, just fine. stretch and get back okay, at exactly okay, six or one. Thank you. Okay, got it. Got it. Got it. So where we start uh, is a mail room management uh, smart facility app that is a mobile application. So here uh, in this uh, mail room management in mobile app, what we can do is like you can able to uh, view the incoming and outgoing consignments. Like what are the uh, consignments has been uh, sent. So those details we can able to see it. And based on that, uh, we can understand uh, like uh, whether the consignment is uh, uh, shared with the concerned uh, person or employee or that information we can able to uh, weave it in the mail room which is available and also we can able to track the courier uh, service provider performance also. Then we have a time and attendance system again which is available in the mobile app where the employee they can do the clocking and clocking through the mobile app, app itself and also they can uh, raise a leave request uh, through this application, uh, either leave a post of permission or on duty, so that can be uh, raised through mobile app. And uh, the employee or who or uh, the admin, they can able to view uh, what are the leave, leave requests by the employees, and they can approve or reject the uh, request. So that can be also uh, available. In, uh... So can you see the screen? Okay, yeah, yes, yes, I can oh, see your screen. Thank you. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, so this is the e-facility app application. It's a web-based application. So the where uh, you can able to log in uh, to the system. So here you, you have to provide your username and then uh, password. 
So once the username and password is given, then you, you can able to log into the system. And also eFacility has uh, multilingual options. So currently we are having English, Arabic, and uh, Chinese version. So now I, I am logging to the eFacility application with my credentials, username, and password. So once you log into the system and the, uh, what are the modules is enabled. So those modules will be displayed over here. And uh, like uh, this is this is the information where you can able to view the site details. So for example, if you have a multi-site, uh, you can uh, select all sites and uh, you can able to view the complete information. Or else if you want to see only the single uh, particular site, yes, you can able to select uh, the uh, site name and you can able to view the details of the uh, system okay so now uh, these are the modules which is enabled uh, so as i said earlier we have 35 modules so which is available in e-facility so now uh, i can uh, take you to the maintenance management part uh, so what we discussed earlier is one of the module in e-facility it's a core module of e-facility okay so once uh, you log into the maintenance management system uh, so this is the standard dashboard which is available so where you can able to view the corrective maintenance status preventive maintenance status and pm calendar status which uh, uh, that information you can able to view with that and the purchase order related status and equipment consumption and uh, like work order related details those details you can able to view it uh, in this standard dashboard section so in maintenance management we have two sub modules one is uh, asset equipment which is uh, asset management and another one is stores and inventory part so now uh, we can uh, see about the uh, asset management part. So the feature, uh, what we discussed is asset equipment register, where uh, you can capture the assets uh, in uh, based on parent and child method. It will work like a tree structure. The, as I said uh, earlier, like you can uh, add the asset as a first level, as a license, and remaining levels like building, floors, area, and like that, you have to capture the asset details in our e-facility. So here you can able to capture the uh, uh, asset is uh, belongs to which site, which location, building, floor, area, and uh, what is the model number, um, asset is belongs to which organization, department. So everything you can able to uh, uh, view it here. In case uh, any floor plans, if you want to attach against the particular floor, yes, that can be also attached over here. Okay. So let me expand. Uh, so under the Sierra ODC private limited, so Sierra ODC is a site. So under this, uh, there will be a first floor uh, terminal two, and then uh, like we have a floor A, B, floor two, floor uh, three, all is available. So whatever uh, uh, like uh, against the particular floor, we can able to view the equipments also. So we have the provision where you can able to view the equipments. Uh, like uh, in cafeteria first floor, uh, we can able to view the uh, AC details, air conditioner details, so that can be, uh, you can able to view it. And here you can able to capture the asset status as well, whether what is the condition of the asset so that you can able to track it. And also you can enable whether uh, this asset is controlled by building management or controlled by POE, so that also you can able to track it. And then uh, against this asset, like what are the documents which is available so that you can upload it. And then uh, like any kind of a pictures or uh, uh, drawings or diagrams so that, that can be also uploaded over here. And then uh, AMC contract. So against this asset, uh, like uh, any AMC is included. Uh, so when the AMC is signed on and what is the uh, start date, end date, uh, and then uh, when, uh, what is the, uh, who is the supplier and uh, what is the vendor reference score. So all those information you can able to leave it in the uh, contract management AMC part. So if the if the AMC is going to expire, so you can also set the three levels of remainder where uh, uh, the facility manager and the uh, contractor uh, you get to know that uh, this item is going to expire, so on so forth. So so once the equipment is filled, uh, then uh, we we can we have to do the schedule maintenance activity. Okay, so here we have an import option. Uh, so you don't want to uh, create asset one by one. So initially uh, we will uh, share the master template. So from that, uh, you can capture all the uh, like uh, items, uh, asset items. So that will be uh, imported in one shot. Then we have a schedule maintenance part. 
So against the asset, if you want to uh, create any schedule maintenance activity, yes, that can be done uh, by using the schedule maintenance system. So where the policy number will be automatically uh, generated. And then uh, uh, for which equipment uh, you want to uh, do the preventive maintenance activity. So that you have to select over here. I'm just selecting air conditioner. So from here, you have to give the description and manufacturer details, instruction, and then model number, and then equipment number. So for example, whatever the equipment which is available in, in your premises, so you have to provide the equipment number for that uh, asset, against that asset. And then uh, like you can also set the frequency. Uh, so how, uh, how many months, once uh, this uh, preventive maintenance activity needs to be taken care of. Or else like uh, we have some set of uh, policies uh, it will automatically trigger. Uh, we have fixed policy and then hierarchy based and triggered based is also available. Uh, so in case if it is hierarchy based, uh, so based on that, uh, it will trigger, uh, the work order will be automatically triggered. And also we can set the priority, whether it is a high priority or low priority or urgent. So those things you can able to set it over here. And then uh, in case for this uh, schedule maintenance activity, uh, if you want to define uh, any kind of a cost, uh, labor cost or material or any other cost, so that can be also defined over here. And in case of any documents, if you want to attach against this equipment for schedule maintenance activity, yes, that can be also attached. And if you are doing any uh, services, like uh, if you want to uh, clean your air conditioner, so like what are the spare parts is required for cleaning the air conditioner? Uh, you need an uh, air filter uh, so that you can able to add it. Then in case, what are the tools is required uh, to uh, do that job? So those tools, the details you can also capture against the particular work. And what are the tasks which needs to be done? Um, uh, who are all the trade persons uh, needs to work on this particular task? So all those information, uh, you can capture it in one shot and every, uh, based on the frequency, uh, it will automatically uh, trigger the uh, alarm or trigger the uh, work order automatically to the technicians as well as the contractor. So this is the flow for the schedule maintenance activity. Then uh, we have an inspection checklist. So where you can able to create some set of uh, questions. Uh, so based on that, uh, the technician will go to the particular location and they can inspect the equipment. In case, uh, in case if the if the technician is uh, finding any fault, uh, they can immediately uh, they can raise a corrective maintenance activity. And then we have equipment reading. Um, so we have uh, two ways of uh, capturing the equipment readings. So one is manual reading, uh, manual capture, and another one is uh, automated uh, reading capture. Uh, so in case if you need automated reading capture, then uh, you have to integrate with the building management system or the IoT or uh, smart meters. So where you can automatically capture the readings in the system. In case if you don't have uh, any kind of uh, smart automation, then uh, you can uh, able to capture it manually. So when you are capturing it manually uh, or when you are automatically capturing through BMS or IoT, in case if you are finding any abnormal readings, then uh, you can also be able to trigger the corrective maintenance work order to the technician to check on it. Then uh, we have a job request. Uh, so again, uh, uh, this is uh, kind of a ticketing uh, tool. So where, uh, where the admin or facility managers, they can be able to uh, uh, capture the request uh, by the employees. So based on the job request, like you can able to trigger a, a work order. So this work order is mainly for any kind of maintenance activity, either it could be a preventive maintenance or corrective maintenance or whatever the maintenance activity will be taken care. So the work order is required for a technician to work on it. So as I explained, uh, related uh, to SLA. So these are the SLA uh, color code, which is available. Uh, so this will be, uh, you can able to see it in this uh, dashboard itself. Uh, so, what, so what are the uh, SLAs? Uh, trigger expired and uh, uh, what is normal stage and what is going to uh, nearing breach. So all those informations you can able to weave it uh, here itself. And based on that, uh, uh, if a manager can able to act on it, why uh, it is still expanding. So those things you can able to uh, weave it in the work order management part. Then we have a history, uh, downtime, contracts related information, and then uh, like, 
inspection detailed reports is also available uh, in this uh, equipment asset management system. And apart from that, like we have a reports as well. So we have A to Z reports, uh, which is available in our e-facility. So these reports you can able to export in PDF or report file format, so that can be done. So I'm just uh, like exporting one report. So where you can able to view uh, like uh, against the job type and department description and trade and uh, how many uh, like uh, uh, work order, preventive maintenance work order is closed, pending, open. So all this information, those numbers you can able to view it in the report itself. So just a one click, you can able to uh, view this report. Can you see the screen or the report section? If not, I am again share the screen to you. No, we can't see the screen again. Is that right, Phil? Yeah, one second, I'm going to share it. So this is the report, uh, what I explained. Can you able to see the report? Uh, so preventive maintenance work order summary report. Uh, so against the job type and department description, uh, you, we, uh, we can able to view uh, the report, uh, what are the items is open, closed and pending. So those numbers you can able to uh, view it over here. Okay. So again, uh, moving back to the application. Then we have a, a dashboard. So we have standard dashboard and maintenance status dashboard is also available. So can you able to see this dashboard? Yes, yeah, we can see okay. dashboard. Okay. Uh, so we have a uh, uh, filter options uh, which is available. So every uh, uh, 60 seconds, it will, it will get automatically refreshed. So again, uh, like organization specific or site specific, you can able to view the data. So now I am exporting the data for, uh, I am giving some date, date range uh, for this data to export. Um, so just I am clicking so here you can see uh, this is the uh, normal work order, uh, like what are the numbers uh, and then preventive maintenance related work order numbers we can able to view it. So from here you can able to uh, view the details, uh, just a one click uh, you can able to view the, what are the pending items uh, that you can able to view it here. So from here itself you can able to uh, export the report, Excel file format. Can you see the screen, uh, report screen? Yes, we can, can you... see the screen. Okay, okay, got it. So this is what uh, uh, available uh, in our uh, maintenance management system. And apart from that, we do have other uh, features and functionalities uh, which is available. Like we have a gate pass uh, generate uh, request option is available. So for example, uh, uh, if the equipment uh, is taking out from the premises, so they have to raise a gate pass request or so the gate pass will be uh, sent for an approval. Then uh, we can able to track whether the item is returnable or non uh, returnable item. So from there, uh, we can able to follow up with the concern uh, went out. So other than that, we have a stores and inventory, uh, field management, uh, then uh, uh, like key management. So all these uh, systems are available, uh, features are available in our e-facility. And one more thing I want to explain, like we have a master section. So these are the masters. This masters is a user definable one. Uh, so where, you, where we have to capture the details of the account code, reading range, uh, utility, then reading type, uh, equipment type, work order type. So all these masters, uh, what we will do, uh, like uh, 
uh, we will provide uh, the Excel template. Uh, so from the client end, uh, they have to capture the data and they have to share it with us. And from our and our implementation team, what they will do, like uh, uh, they will verify uh, the data, whether uh, it's the right data, uh, they will do the master uh, verification and validation. And based on that, once the data is verified, uh, so our team will uh, do the input. And also uh, we will provide the complete training to the FM team uh, from the client side. Uh, so from next time onwards, uh, uh, client themselves, their uh, IT team or their FM team can be able to import it in the system. So they don't need our support. Uh, so that is the one of the added advantage. So we will give a complete training to the uh, customer. So how to use this application. So everything will be provided uh, to the customer. Okay. So I have covered uh, the maintenance management. I think uh, 15 to 20 minutes. I think that uh, I think covered right, uh, but that, uh, so can we go it for can we go for a QA session? I'm sorry. Um, can we also have a live demo session on energy consumption monitoring? on how it works with the e facility um, application, how to okay. monitor the energy consumption. Maybe if you're managing a residential um, apartment, how can you monitor and track the energy okay. consumption? Okay. Thank you. So sorry, at this point of time, uh, we were not able to share the live as both. So this is the sample screen, uh, what we have uh, implemented in our uh, own campus. Uh, so from this screen, we can able to capture uh, uh, the indoor environmental quality, uh, like and then uh, uh, EB power utilization, solar power generation, and then air quality related information, and then uh, like uh, equipment type uh, wise utilization. And also we can integrate with the uh, uh, access control system. We can able to view like how many persons are inside the campus, and what is the employee uh, occupancy. So all this information, so you can able to view it in this dashboard. So from here, how much you have saved. So those informations, uh, how much uh, percentage of money you have saved and uh, how much uh, trees has saved. So that kind of uh, insight information, you can able to leave it in this uh, dashboard. So unfortunately, the live dashboard is under maintenance. So that is the reason we were not able to save. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that's fine. So I don't know if um we have um students who might be having any questions or clarifications about e facility um soft application. Um we'll just use the next fifteen to twenty minutes to um take questions. Is that fine, Mr. Rafael? Okay. okay, so please kindly signify with the hand raise option. If you need any clarification on any questions, areas of concern as regards our e facilities software, I think we'll do that for the next 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, so uh, Mr. Godwin, please over to you. Let's have your question. All right, good evening, uh, Mr. Rapper. Yeah, good evening, good evening. Uh, I really love what I see, but my question goes to us. I don't know, how can we get this kind of software? Because I think this software is very important in an organization where you are managing uh, their facilities. So the cost and how one can get it, that's exactly why, why I'm calling. No. That's my okay. question rather. Okay, fine. Uh, the cost is uh, depends on the number of uh, buildings and number of users. So based on that, uh, we have to define the pricing. Uh, so approximately, I could say like now uh, e-facility has uh, three models. One is enterprise license model, which is on-premises uh, perpetual. And also we have a yearly subscription and cloud hosted perpetual and uh, subscription model is available. 
so perpetual model in the sense like it's a one time lifetime license so where the customer they can procure uh, the license for one time uh, and also we have a yearly subscription option is also available so recently we have launched uh, saas as well okay uh, so saas uh, model is also available uh, for this uh, facility management software um, so the for one building five users uh, the pricing starts uh, for the one time lifetime uh, license cost is about uh, 15000 us dollars wow only for uh, one site uh, five users so that is for the enterprise license model uh, which mainly for uh, customization and integration and everything will come uh, comes uh, in enterprise uh, model um, like uh, we have a yearly subscription where uh, it, it will cost around uh, uh, 7500 us dollars approximately i would say uh, for yearly subscription so from there uh, if you are adding the users then if you are adding uh, then uh, buildings or sites or whatever so the price will may uh, get varied it depends on that the price will go up sometimes and also we have a saas model uh, so it's a readily available solution what you can uh, plug and play uh, which is about uh, per user the charge will be uh, us dollars 99 uh, per month i am sorry uh, we have only uh, us dollar option not naira option sorry for that. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Rafael, for the clarification. So, do we still have um, any other class members who would have to have any questions or clarifications? This kind of signify with the Android option. We have just 10 to 15 minutes to wrap up this session. Thank you. Okay, Mr. George, over to you, please. Yes, Mr. George, please over to you. You can go ahead with a question. Can you hear me? We yes, hear you yes. now. We can hear you. No, thank you so much, uh, for Sotito, for your your the breakdown. I think I love the the, the software and for, for someone like us who, who is so heavy on them. Um, on facilities management, you could see as a whole. What difference um, can you sell for me so I can sell to them? So that we drop a CMS program that we use called Instanta to embark on this one that you use because I see that it's more robust in terms of features. So I don't know what 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 sells this. What gives this away compared to the other other um, softwares that we use for facilities management? Thank you. Okay. Um, so once you in, use this install the software, this is mainly uh, the FM tool, this maintenance management tool is mainly for uh, uh, like FM managers, like uh, we want to track whether the work is going on the right direction. Uh, so you want to uh, like uh, everything uh, is working fine and also you want to maintain the SLAs. Um, and for example, if you are uh, doing the FM services to any of your uh, any of your client companies, then there will be a penalty charges as well. So in case of uh, uh, like uh, the work completion, uh, in case of any delay, so you have to avoid the penalties uh, only through this uh, FM tool. So for example, if you are doing an Excel, uh, if you are using Excel C for doing any kind of a maintenance activity or manual process. So then uh, you don't have any kind of a track, uh, you don't have any kind of a SLA management, or uh, like what to say, uh, you don't have any track for avoiding the penalties. So, so automatically what uh, your customer will do, like they will uh, do, uh, they will uh, ask you to pay for a penalty. So that is the reason. So most of the FM services company uh, will go for uh, FM tool to avoid such things. So the FM tool is very important. Because even uh, uh, without FM tool, um, uh, so all top companies is facing a problem uh, for uh, 
uh, user experience, uh, their health and well-being, all these aspects, uh, there is a problem. So they, they can avoid uh, implementing uh, the, uh, this here from facility management. Tool. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Mr. Rafael, uh, Mr. George, did you get that? I'm not sure I got that, but um, I wish I wish he could take it a bit slower because it was a bit fast for me to grasp what, what he was saying. But to be honest, uh, it was a bit fast for me. But I hope okay. you to, to share that again. Yeah, yeah. Let, let, look, what sells this app? What sells this platform? What gives this more more edge over other ones? And uh, that's 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 how we break it down a bit. Okay, let me explain once again. Um, so using this FM tool is mainly for avoid the penalties. Okay, and also the user experience or health and well-being, all these aspects. The FM tool uh, is mainly uh, focused by the facility management companies. So where, uh, for example, if you are doing a FM services uh, work for any of your customers, so you have to maintain, or you have to maintain the SLA, you have to maintain uh, the tickets, and then uh, like uh, what to say, uh, if, if, if the tickets got escalated to the higher level person, then uh, they will uh, uh, do a penalty charge for uh, not completing a job. So that is the reason the FM tool is is much needed to avoid the penalties uh, from any of uh, any of the companies. So now most of the companies like uh, what they will do, uh, they will uh, 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 they will raise a penalty in case if the uh, if the work is not completed on time. So so that is the reason the FM tool is required. Oh, okay, that's great. I think I get it now. They said the price is fifty fifty thousand dollars. Is that what what you said? Yeah, it just starts fifteen thousand dollars. That is uh, for on premises lifetime license model. What I'm saying. And there's assurance that the software, because this this man made at some point, even what we use sometimes break down or goes goes off. Um, intermittently without any notification. So does this app, uh, this CMA program, does it guarantee non-failure? Non it's, 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 and if at all such will happen, what's the response time in terms of restoration? Mm, sorry, can you please come again? Once again, uh, okay. the, the, the software does, because most times we experience, I think that's what makes me start a bit trend. Uh, Causes sometimes it does goes off. There's, there's network glitch, the system glitch. You can access the software. We are hung. You can you can raise work orders and the likes. So does this platform eliminate such? And in the event where you have um, a system failure, how long does it take to restore? In, in terms of yeah, when there's a failure you know, from from the software and uh, let's say from from the program, and how long does it take to restore? Okay, uh, you are talking about the installation, correct? Restoration in terms of failure, when, when you are not start installation, you there's you restored, you are now using the software, you're using work orders, and all of a sudden there's like a system failure, as in the software fails, it doesn't it doesn't tend to work anymore, and there's this notification that comes on this technical issue. So does that happen with this software? And if it happens, how long does it take to get restored? Okay, I think uh, I'm not sure about this question. Um, so I have to uh, check and I will respond to you back again. So you can share the, share your query to uh, uh, your team. Uh, so your team will respond through email and I will address you. That's fine. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Um, Mr. Okay, I think Mr. God is on the Zoom. Um, so yeah, I want to ask. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Uh, the software is it mobile compat uh, compatible? Can it be installed on an Android device, iOS device, a tablet, or sort of? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, e facility support uh, 
smart facility app that is a mobile application which support Android as well as the iOS. Okay, okay. Which supports to the latest Thank version you. of Android and iOS. Okay. So if you came to install it in the facility now, and we need it on the manager's and phone, you also do that for us, right? Yes, yes, yeah, that can be done. So the mobile app is mainly uh, designed same. for uh, end user and technician perspective. So where uh, the technician uh, technician will not sit in office, so they will go for a, a site location to do the maintenance work. So that is the purpose. Uh, the mobile app is designed mainly for technician perspective and they can go to the particular location. Uh, they can uh, scan uh, the QR code or whatever. Uh, they can view the web order and uh, uh, they can sort it out, capture the photo, upload it. And once they complete it, uh, they can close the web order then and then. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Like how long would the installation take? A few hours. Hello, again, please come again. I said, how long would the installation take? A few hours. Yeah, installation will take for one day. A full so, one day. Uh, yes, the license we can provide it for one day, but still uh, the master, template collection and all, uh, we need uh, uh, customer support. Okay. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Mr. Rafael. Okay, I think we have Mr. Samuel Zanzo. Please, um, can you mute and um, ask a question? Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Mr. Raphael. Yeah, good evening, Mr. Samuel. For today's lecture. So I have a few questions concerning the functionality of the software. Okay. So like in my organization, we have like 21 branches all over Nigeria. Okay. We have one unit head that is stationed in Lagos. So if this is going to be given a report of facility maintenance all across the old branches in Nigeria. Is it possible to get all these reports at the same time to one desk in Lagos? Yes. Yes, that can be done. You have 21 sites uh, in Nigeria. So if you want to uh, view the report for all 21 sites, yes, you can able to export it. Or else if you want to view the report for a specific site, uh, site number one or site number two yes you can able to view the data so we have a filter in the report section where you can able to uh, select the site and you can export the report let me address your query okay oh are with me sir hello sir yeah hello yes sir. So the second aspect was on the diesel and generator consumption. Does it also capture this as well? Yes, the, uh, it very much captured. Yes, it does that too. Yeah, it's all it's available. It's available in the Okay, so in the event of this e facility, does it reduce manpower? Like we need a lesser facility officer in each organization at the invention of this, or we still need both to work together. Okay. Uh, I could say yes, because uh, uh, like uh, in e-facility, it will automate, we have a resource scheduling option. Uh, so automated resource scheduling option is available. So where, uh, for example, if you have uh, one, uh, like uh, five peoples or uh, two peoples or three peoples like that, the application itself, uh, it will uh, view who is available next and based on that, it will allocate the uh, task to the technician. So you don't want to uh, like have uh, a more number of employees. So, so it can eliminate uh, the manpower. Okay, so it's, very, it's eliminate some workers. Stores. All right, thank you very much, sir. That will be all for now, sir.
And thank you, Mr. Raphael, for that clarification. Um, can't see anybody's hands up again. Okay, and so do you still have anyone who would like to ask any question? Uh, we'll be wrapping up this session in the next five minutes. Please kindly signify questions, areas of concerns that you would want Mr. Raphael to uh, shed more light on. Okay, Mr. Kim, please, over to you. Okay, for me, I don't know, I wanted to ask if we can get a demo that we can interact with. So, no, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, your voice is breaking. I'm not able to hear it properly. Okay, okay. All right, I'm asking, I'm asking if we can get a demo to interact with it. You you need a demo. Yes, a, de a demo of the software to interact with it, to actually see how it works. We perhaps we could just impute uh, okay. some rough data into it. Okay, okay, got it. So like if you have any kind of requirements, then you can please reach us directly. Uh, so we will discuss and we will give the demo of the application. And then uh, you uh, like uh, you have to sign the NDA and other uh, uh, like uh, ND, uh, like we have to sign the NDA document and then uh, once the commercial is approved from your end, then we will issue the demo application. Sorry, I could not comprehend it what you are saying. What I'm saying is that can we get a demo of the software that we can interact with? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like you can uh, reach us directly. Uh, to work on any facility dot in website. So mm -hmm. from there, we will discuss your requirement. Uh, if you have a genuine requirement, then we will share the demo application. So, uh, so since it's enterprise application, so we will not uh, gain, uh, we will not give any uh, demo account uh, uh, for now. So you have to sign the NDA and other uh, aspects of that. Uh, some agreements you have to sign it from your end. Then only uh, uh, in case if we have a genuine requirement, then uh, once the Commercial is finalized. So from our end, uh, we will uh, give the demo application. Okay, All right, that's fine. Thank you very much. Um, if you also need um guide on how to go about um, sending the proposal, you can reach out to us. Um, definitely direct you on how to go about it. Um, is that fine, Mr. K? Um, okay. I can't see anybody hand up again. Um. Any other question, suggestion, area of concern before we wrap up the session? Okay. In the absence of no other question, I think it's fine to end this session. Thank you so much, Mr. Raphael, for sharing with us um, the in-depth knowledge about facility, e facilities and technology software. Um, we hope that all what we learned today will be able to you know, um, implement and be able to connect it to what um, FM technology is in, in the real world. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. See you. Thank you. Thank in you the so next much. Class. Thank you for your time. So, thank you for every, everyone for joining the session. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.